One of the best things about collecting Hot Wheels is the backstories. I know everyone can remember the first Super that they found in the wild, right? It's just something that you just won't forget. So I can pretty much tell you all the backstories that I have for the Supers in my collection for the year 2022. And I went ahead and decided to document that just in case later on down the road whenever I pass on my collection to my daughters that they have something to read and look at and just get a glimpse of a little piece of my life, you know? And uh, I just think that's pretty cool. This hobby has so much potential to build new relationships, make new friends, acquaintances, and just pretty much establish camaraderie with one another. With that being said, there's gonna be a lot of stories I'm gonna share with you all that have all derived back from friends, acquaintances, and just pretty much everyone in the hobby helping each other out. Whether that be through direct trades or one of my friends telling me that a certain store is gonna get cases and then later on I end up going and scoring and because of that, it kind of just all ties in and blends together. All right, so first on the chopping block is gonna be the 55 Chevy, which is from case A. And this was the first Super that came out for the year. So this is the car. It's really nice. The blue paint on it is perfect and the chrome wheels, you just gotta love them. Just gives that old school car look. And here is the uh, little piece of document that I have in there that I wrote down for this Super. And according to this, uh, I actually found, I remember, I actually found three in total at Walmart. I found two at one Walmart down the street and then another one at another Walmart further down the street. And I initially thought I only found two of them, but when I got home, I noticed that I had three of them. And this was actually the first time I found more than one Super in one night. I ended up trading the rest and just kept the one. So I know my friend Chris, uh, he was really big on 55 Chevys, so I ended up trading him two of them. And I think I ended up getting demons at the time, the gold demon super treasure hunt. So that's the story behind that 55 Chevy. All right, next we have uh, B case. This is the 73 BMW 3.0 CSL race car. Here's the car. And then uh, here is the little piece of document I have for this car. And so according to the document, I connected with a good friend of mine, Chris Lyon, shout out to you bro, uh, with Sam. And so Chris sold me this Super for cheap. I think at the time I paid $15, which is a pretty good deal. Then I have here that Sam sold Chris a 124 scale M2 Pink 55 Bel Air Chase. Uh, I don't know why I have that in there. I think at the time that's what was going on in our little group. So yeah, that's, that's the story behind that. Sam's a good friend of ours. Unfortunately, I don't think he hunts that much anymore, but hopefully we'll see him soon. C case is the Dodge purple van. And I can tell you, I remember this one off the top of my head. Uh, I was with Sam when we found this one. And that's exactly what this story is gonna tell you. So I uh, found this very first one with Sam earlier one morning at Walmart, which is down the street from my house, that location, Chris's friend. Paul showed up shortly after and took the other super. So I remember we were at the first aisle at the very beginning in our Walmart, we have a section for the pegs. And then later, if you walk down that same aisle, there's another little end cap that has like a little dis a mini display. So Chris's friend Paul ended up finding that purple super van on the end cap. And we found the other purple van on the pegs like where all the main uh, Hot Wheels are at. So uh, later on, I ended up finding about seven to eight of these vans in a PDQ display, or actually multiple displays. And I gave one back to Sam and his friend Jose. I actually wrote it down here. This is actually my least favorite Super. Um, not really too fond of it too much, but hey, it's a Super, right? All right, the Studebaker. This car, I should say truck, gave me so much trouble. I remember I was going through about 12 cases until I actually found it, I think. It took me 14 to 18 cases until I finally found this one. And it was at uh, another Walmart off of, uh, I'll just say it's off of Rigsby. And I found this one night and this was actually one of the most very frustrating supers to find uh, just because I was trying so hard and it took me a long time to finally find it. So yeah, um, this truck is not even that nice. This is probably one of the supers I should have just waited to pay for because I think right now 
It's going for like 20 or 30 bucks or something like that. I don't know about 30, maybe like 20, 25. This is the uh, 2020 Corvette from Case E. And let's see the backstory behind this one because I can't actually remember off the top of my head what the story is behind this one. So I found two or three of these at Rigsby Walmart and one of them I gave to my friend Chris Lyon and he gave me the gold Shelby a few months later. I think at the time the 2020 Corvette was going for I think 60 bucks or something like that. And later on I think he acquired another gold Shelby and that's what he ended up giving me back. So that ended up working out because he's a Chevy guy and I'm a Ford guy. So, you know, do the math. And I'll do that too. Uh, if I find more than one super, I would just give it away to a friend and we'll have that uh, understanding that whenever he finds something that I need, he'll just give it back to me. And if the value is like within a $10, $15 range, we just call it even. But if there's a huge discrepancy with the value, like $100 or 50 bucks, then we kind of talk about adding in some cash or something or something else to trade. But you know, we just give that 10 to $15 leeway just, you know, cause it's, you're not gonna find something that's gonna be the exact dollar amount of what you're trying to trade for. So you just have to take a little loss here and there or take a little dub here and there, you know? Ah, the next case. This is the gold nugget. And I will remember how I found this one actually. I ended up trading a uh, Chase, M2 Chase for it. It was a bigger die cast, a 124 scale if I'm not mistaken. The only thing that I notice on this car, and it's not a big deal to me, but still I do notice it is that there's a small, small, small little dimple right here on the blister. And um, I just noticed it. I mean, I don't know what I'd call this. I mean, maybe like a nine and a half out of 10 maybe, or 9.7 out of 10. I don't know. Um, other than that, the card's straight. There's no veins. There's no cracks on the blisters. There's just like a little dimple. And I don't know what that is. Uh, and I don't know how that got there, but let's look at the story. And according to this, I initially found a 124 scale Moon Eyes, and this was a 73 Chevrolet Chase piece, Cheyenne C10 truck, yellow, at Walmart, down the street from my house. And I used the truck to trade for the Gold Civic. Super cool dude named Sin, if you're on here, bro, appreciate you. On offer up, uh, met him at his work uh, near, I'm not gonna say where, but kind of close to the house and uh, we ended up doing the trade so yeah at the time it was about even i don't know 100 bucks 100 bucks we ended up just swapping and it was we called it a day but now i think the gold civic is probably around uh, i think it's like close to a 200 hundred dollar piece and the moon ice chase i think is uh probably like maybe still around the hundred dollar range or it might have just depreciated slightly but overall you know, the gold uh, Civic kind of maintained its value and actually increased overall. Uh, next on the chopping block is the G-Case Volkswagen Kafer Racer. This is a cool car, I like it actually. And here's the story, which I can't remember how I got this car, but according to the story, it says, I traded my 2022 Jaguar for this Kafer. And the dude said he gets free supers from reps at his job. Uh, I know who this is. Yeah, I, know, I won't tell. I won't say who it is, but I know who this is. Um, yeah, that's how I got this caper, and that's awesome. Uh, talk about a job with awesome perks, right? You get free supers and chase pieces. I dig it. I don't know if I put it in my top five for that year, but it is a nice piece. It actually grew on me because I actually have another uh, gold caper that I like a lot. It's a custom that I did from the Ultra Hot series. All right, uh, this super is actually one of my top five supers not because of the model or casting but because of how i found it and this is the h case jaguar f type one day uh, me and my daughter and my wife were at uh, macy's and so here's the car and we f we uh, were going through the toy section because my daughter wanted to go up there and um we were going through the toy section out there in the hot wheels and I ended up finding, I actually kept the bag too, just because I was, it was just really cool that I didn't even know Macy's sold Hot Wheels. But I kept the bag and then I had the receipt with it too. Just to show it is from Macy's. I say this is my daughter's first super because of her, I wouldn't have found it. We went to go eat at the Cheesecake Factory near this mall near us. 
and I had parked near the Macy's because there was no parking nowhere around the restaurant, so I had to park near the Macy's. On the way back, we went to the third floor to see shoes for my daughter, and uh, my daughter ran into this toy section, and I ended up seeing that there was Hot Wheels there, and so I saw this super on the shelf just laying there, and next to a few other Hot Wheels that were close by, so I always say this is my daughter's first uh, super that she found, but if you didn't know, now you know, Macy's does sell Hot Wheels. I didn't know that at first. The next one is the Mustang, J Case Custom 18 Ford Mustang GT. And I'm a Mustang guy, but I don't really like this car too much. Uh, not really a Coyote guy, so there goes that. But the card's pretty good condition. Uh, the story behind that is, according to this, I bought this car and the Jaguar from my brother. This was before I found the Jaguar myself at Walmart. Yeah, I ended up buying one for my brother and finding one at the uh, Walmart. Next is the K Case Nissan Skyline 2000 GTX, and this is a pretty nice piece, I'm gonna say. I uh, ended up actually getting another loose super of this car from a collector at a diecast meet. And uh, I actually just traded that off though uh, to somebody on the groups. So this Skyline was another hard one to find. I had to really dig for this one and I remember it was one of my few HEB cars. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with the area, HEB is a local grocery chain store and uh, they will have their Hot Wheels stocked overnight. So that way when you go in the morning, they're already on the pegs and they're ready for picking. They will never, if not never, rarely leave their pallets out in the aisles. So at nighttime, you won't find nothing. And it's only in the morning time will you find the, the car stocked on the pegs. And yeah, I got really lucky with this one. The uh, L Case Lamborghini Miura SV. This has become one of my top five supers just because of the paint and the wheels. It's a really nice car. Initially, I didn't really like it too much, but over time, it just really grew on me. Uh, I ended up finding a couple of these supers at a Walmart across town. I had one that was bad carded and I ended up selling it to my buddy, Chris Lyon. Um, and at the time, I think they were going for 60 bucks. And I told him just give me 20 bucks for it. And so uh, we called it a deal. I didn't really care too much uh, for this super, like I mentioned before, but uh, over time, yeah, it just really grew on me. And it kind of gives off some Ferrari vibes. All right, next is MK's uh, Mustang SVO, the 84. And this is my favorite casting for those of you that don't know. Uh, this was one of the supers that I was looking forward to all year because obviously it's my favorite casting. But with my luck, I didn't find any at all. And there's actually a funny story involving my brother. So he ended up finding one of these cars at a Walmart, kind of close by, down the street further. And um, the security guy there took it from him, from his hand. He took it from his hand and told him like, you can't buy this here because I already warned you not to be going through the pallets. <laughs> so that's a story for another video. But in my area, if you don't go through the pallets, you're never gonna find anything in the morning. So you have to automatically go through the pallets. And if you don't go through the pallets, you're not gonna find anything in the morning, trust me. They are never consistent. They'll tell somebody not to be going through the pallets, but then five minutes later, somebody else will go through the pallets and end up finding what you're looking for. So you just have to kind of be sneaky about it and not be as like messy or uh, obviously out there, you know what I mean? You have to just do it discreetly. Uh, but yeah, the, he found it and uh, they ended up taking it away from him. So that really sucked for him. It's on the top five list for me, uh, obviously, because of the paint and the casting and uh, the wheel setup. The chrome wheel stagger setup is just, it's just an automatic win in my opinion. All right, next is the N case uh, Super, which is a 94 Audi Avent RS2. And uh, this was a Super that I had done a trade with. And this is one of the only Supers I don't have documentation for, but I do remember uh, a Lamborghini Miura was traded for this car. And at the time, I think they were both around the same value, so it ended up working out for both of us. And um, this isn't really a highly desired Super, and I'm not really too fond of this one. The paint isn't really that distinguishable from the mainline. You really can't tell unless you really look at it closely. But uh, overall, I mean, it's a decent super, nothing too crazy. All right, boiling down to my last two ones, which is the 32 Golf, and this was off of P Case. And um, I had been trying to find this car at Walmart and I didn't have any luck. So a few weeks later, 
targets started dropping in that case. And I remember finding this uh, 32 Ford at a local Target right when the cases started dropping for Target. I remember there was another collector there waiting with the uh, in the aisle, and uh, they had brought out the boxes, those four of them, and we split cases. I took two, he took two. By the way, the employees let us go to them as long as we had stocked them on the peg, so they were really cool about that. So we ended up splitting the two and two cases, and that was the one that came out with the Super. So this is the PK Super, which is a 32 Golf. And it's an old school car. It's pretty nice, but not one of my favorite Supers. Last but not least is the Q-Case Camaro. This is the 81 Camaro, it's green. I remember finding this car at a Target out of town. We were going to the outlet malls and uh, by the outlets, there's a Target there and a lot of people go to that Target too. So I got very lucky and I was able to find this on the pegs. Um, I think that Target might have been putting them out around 11-ish or 10-ish and I ended up scoring. So uh, yeah, that was like one of the very few times I found a car on the pegs at like a store I don't normally hunt at. And it was a really cool way to end off the year for the Supers for that year. I hope that with the stories I've given you all, it provides some motivation to do some hunting, building those relationships so that you're able to do some trading and get information on stores that are getting cases to increase your odds of scoring. This also might be a good idea for you to do, especially if you plan on leaving your collection to someone in your family or friends. It's always fun and interesting to read pieces of other people's lives. And if you have stories that others can read, it helps strengthen that sentimental value. I always hear about people selling off things that they inherit, but if you can attach something concrete, like these stories written down, it helps people who are getting your inheritance connect the sentimental value piece because they have now read those pieces of your lives. So it might help them understand the connection and increase their understanding of the sentimental value. And in turn, they might be more likely to keep your collection as opposed to selling it off for cash, you know? Before I end this video, I wanted to go ahead and just touch on one last thing before we end for today. I wanted to go ahead and quote this Bible verse, Mark 4, 39. And in this verse, he says, And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. So when we look at this verse, Jesus displays his divine power over the most uncontrollable entities on earth, such as storms and wind, things that you know us as uh, human beings wouldn't be able to control. All of us are getting through some kind of storm in our life. Jesus has command over it. If he can calm the storms and wind, he can certainly bring peace to the turmoil or struggles we are all going through in our own separate lives. We just have to trust in him and he will restore our peace even through the most fiercest storms we go through. I pray that you all are doing well and if you're battling a storm in your life, I pray that Jesus brings you healing and peace and be kind to your fellow collectors and as always, happy hunting.